Hello everyone and welcome back to another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. It's Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo here with a great announcement. Took my last final last night at about 11.30 p.m. and I am now officially done. So when I've been saying this semester was coming to a close, I meant it. And it came to a very exciting close with me taking a final that had absolutely nothing to do with my grade because... The rest of the grades in the class were worth more than the test, so it was kind of anticlimactic. As it was jumping into Star Citizen early yesterday and finding out they changed it and I had to start over. Which gave me an opportunity to start thinking about the differences between what the economy in Star Citizen was going to be like when the game went live. So in my utopia, Star Citizen is already out, and we're playing the game and enjoying it, and it has great frame rate and lots of people playing it. So with that, let's talk about what would happen in the economy should, say, everybody all of a sudden want a Caterpillar. In that situation, MISC is going to have an influx of orders for Caterpillars. It's going to need an increase amount of resources and components to build those ships. That's going to generate cargo missions both to them and to their suppliers. Those cargo missions are going to need to be run by either us, the players, or by NPCs. Now NPCs or us start running those missions and pirates start to interdict the delivery of the scarce resources that are needed to make caterpillars. In that situation, the game is automatically going to generate missions to protect the convoys, bringing all the materials and parts to MISC. So without getting even more detailed, you see how the game is going to be organic, a living organism, and dynamic, how it's ever-changing based on what we do. And there's a lot more that I can go into to discuss how that would be beneficial to us. But we're in the PU and the PTU right now. So there's a generic way that other space games in the past have had missions set up. So let's talk about cargo first. Cargo missions in the game are currently set up in a bring a resource to a destination and make money. And some resources are going to be sold at a very low price at one location and at a very high price at another location. So currently, that's the way that they have the missions in the game. I would suspect that when 3.6 comes online, they'll actually be making more triangular trade routes. And that would be like, well, you all know how I like mining in the game, mostly because even with it not being complete or just in its early stages of development, to me, mining is still the most complete Pro profession in the game. So the way a triangular trade route would work would be I would go and mine, say, aluminum over on Yella. I would take that aluminum to a refinery and then take that over to either Microtech or R Corp or Hurston to be used in manufacturing. And then I would take manufactured goods that I pick up somewhere, say, on Hurston and bring them to one of the mining colonies or mining stations on, let's say, Ariel or Aberdeen or Yella, whatever it might be. So you see there's a triangular trade route, and they will be very, very, very profitable in the future. Currently, it's very difficult to make money any other way but mining. Some people claim that they're making a lot of money through deliveries, but what I find is that nine and 10 times I go up to a terminal, the terminals are empty. And that's in the current patch of 3.3.7. I'm not saying that's always the case, I'm just saying that's the case most often. In this situation, I'm jumping onto a 600i. I've picked up medical supplies and I'm going to decide to take them all the way back to Hurston. To me, that made a lot of sense because Hurston is an ugly, pollution-ridden 
atmosphere, disgusting, we could say it all. So medical supplies would make a lot of sense for me to bring there and they would probably have a lot of value because I'm thinking logically. In actuality, because this is a, a beta, or I should say an alpha of an alpha, I made the biggest mistake that you can make. I have spent all my money on one cargo run. And what happens? Well, let's jump to the future and see what happens. After about four and a half to five minutes of quantum jump, I make it to Hurston. It takes a few minutes for me to lock in on Lorville because I have to wait for my quantum jump drive to cool down, and then the game will crash. Yes, I just wasted 26,000 credits or whatever it is at this point on one run and lost all my money. Where did that leave me? Let's think about this, because there are some missions that I could use to make money almost immediately. So from this point on, or at least for the next five minutes or so, I'm going to talk and what you see on the screen isn't actually going to be showing you what would be going on in the game. So I do have quite a number of missions that I could run at this point without any money. If I have a fighter, I could do an ECN. ECN missions usually will take me to the area around Delamar. I'll fly to Delamar, I'll make an interception of a ship in need, so in other words, intercept where they are, or rendezvous where they are, and then fight off waves of pirates that are trying to take that ship out. And I'll usually make between 1,000 and 1,200 credits for that. Not a lot, considering that currently in the game, it's going to cost me a minimum of about 370,000 credits to get another starter ship. Well, what else could I do for the money? Well, at that point, if all I have are cargo running ships, I could actually take a delivery mission, which will mean that I have to fly to an outpost somewhere, whether it be abandoned or an outpost that will have somebody at it, pick up and then deliver a package. Those will net me between 680 and about 1,200 credits, depending on, I think, how far you go and what the actual item is that you're delivering. I've made 680 for aluminum, I've made 950 for delivering medical supplies, and I've made 400 or 600 for delivering waste or getting rid of waste. Those are probably going to be your best missions if you have a ship capable of carrying cargo or a ship that you could actually carry cargo onto. If you have a starter ship, the best one for that, believe it or not, would be the Reliant Core because it has the ramp in the back that you could walk right up to. The Mustang Alpha and the Aurora, it would probably be the Aurora would be the next one because it has a small space in the back where you can place one box down. These delivery missions usually have no more than one item that you have to grab. Some of them are going to bring you to places where you can buy certain elements or, or certain things like medical supplies or spirits and then deliver them somewhere. Combining the ability to buy cargo and delivering it with a delivery mission will maximize the profitability on that route. If you're in the Port Olisar area, taking these delivery missions should get you up to a few thousand credits rather quickly. But it's not going to get you to a point where you can make enough money to buy a ship. Now recently on a Ask the Developers, they had a... Well, they had somebody on there talking about the economy and how currently the economy is being put on steroids, I guess is a good way to put it, so you can make money much faster. What they're looking at is ships costing a number of hours to purchase and not a set amount of UEC. They wouldn't give a exact time that they want you to play the game to be able to purchase a ship. What they did do was talk very vaguely about what that would be. In the, in the 
time that we have to play right now, I find the most profit to be made in having large ships that you can carry a large number of containers from point A to point B if you're doing cargo runs. So if any of you have tons of UEC saved up when 3.4 goes uh, comes out, you'll be able to purchase or rent something like a Starfarer, something like a Cutlass, something like a Constellation, something like a Freelancer, something with lots of cargo space so you could run those cargo missions if that's what you want to do. My suggestion for the current economy uh, is obvious. Rent yourself a prospector and go out and mine. Ever since I did my last video, I've been getting a lot of suggestions. And those suggestions have me going to all different places. The rings around Yella, for instance, have an element called Laranite. And Laranite, if you can get it pure enough, is going to net you somewhere between 20 and 35k per run. That would mean in about 10 runs, you have enough for a starter ship. If you go to Ariel or to the asteroid ring that's over by, I think the name of the, the planet is Arcorp. It's the big asteroid ring that rings Stanton, not a planet itself. That one is going to have a lot of that Bexalite that I find on Ariel. And if you can get that to a high enough content, you're going to make the same 20 to 30K. Those are my suggestions for now. But if you're just trying to play the game the way that you want to play it when the game goes live, you might find certain things hamper your ability to make money. I want to talk about bugs now. And I should have captured some of those moments. You already saw one bug, filling up my cargo hold with every dime I had and losing it because the game decided to crash. The game is alpha, it's going to crash a lot. Never leave with money that you can't afford to lose. In other words, never leave with a cargo hold filled with everything you have. Unless you've been playing for a few hours and you feel like the server's stable enough, but even then, it could crash at any moment. The second thing is, be wary of free fly weekends. Although the last couple have been incredible and people have been wonderful and helpful and true Star Citizen ambassadors, sometimes you get a group of people that just want to shoot down everyone. Perfect example of this is I was going out around Hurston, trying to find whatever elements are on Hurston that I might want to mine. I was flying around the ocean when I was jumped by another player. And essentially it was somebody on a free fly weekend and they just wanted to see what it was like shooting down something in atmosphere. Being in a prospector and then being in a super hornet, I really didn't have a chance. But I lost a full hold of, I forget what I was carrying when I was shot down. But it wasn't frustrating because I knew that I was taking a risk flying in such a congested area. Going to places where people don't normally go during free fly weekends, like staying off at Port Olisar instead of staying around Hurston, might have been a better idea for me. I just don't know what to suggest right now because the game is going to be in a very, very strict development cycle. When I mean by strict, it's going to be keeping us in a ever expanding sandbox, but keeping us in a sandbox that doesn't have every element completely fleshed out. And it's going to be some time before that actually happens. I'm not telling you to fall in love with prospecting, with mining. Because honestly, it could be very boring for people that don't want to just keep flying out and collecting the same resource. What I'm telling you is to have a little bit of have a little bit of objectivity and a little bit of imagination in building your own gameplay. 
Let the gameplay be emergent. Grab a couple of friends, go to an outpost, spawn a whole bunch of your buggies, and go on a race. Grab a couple of friends, take a starter ship, go out into the middle of the yellow rings, and go towards Grimhex, and wait for the pirates to spawn, and just shoot them down. You can have fun in the game right now. Don't make it about making money in the game, because that's going to be something that's very difficult to do for the time being. But if you do like prospecting, if you do like mining, head on out there. Dig in the dirt, break apart asteroids, and find those elements and sell them. But be ready, because with each major update, you're going to have to start all over. And you really have to have thick skin and smile a lot, because you can have all the money in the world one minute and back down to a starting amount of UEC the next.